Why wait to earn the degree you deserve? You have the experience. You have the knowledge. Now is the time to get the credit for the work you've done and earn the recognition you deserve by starting your comeback at Purdue Global. It's time to earn a degree you'll be proud of. A degree that employers will respect. It's never too late. Never too late to come back stronger and move forward in your career. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Purdue's online university for working adults. Shopping for humans is hard. Shopping for your dog is easy, thanks to Bark. Every month, we deliver toys and treats just for your dog. Whether it's fun, plush, or tough toys for heavy chewers, we spoil all the dogs. Subscribe now and get a free upgrade at BarkBox.com slash iHeart. Episode 116, How to Make Budgeting Work for You with Rachel Cruz. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And we are over the moon excited. I say that all the, like every interview, but we're (laughs) over the moon excited uh, to have the one and only Rachel Cruz with us on today's show. Yeah. You know, you know her, you know who she is. Right. right. Like we don't need to introduce her. Now she's on our show. Yeah. So Dave Ramsey's daughter, money saving guru in her own right. And she's hanging out with us for a little bit to talk about how to make budgeting work for you, regardless of your personality or spending type. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All types of tips. We're excited to get into it. Yes. But first, our sponsors. Sponsors. Also brought to you by taking one for the team. When you experience something awful so that others don't have to, or you learn a new lesson the painfully hard way so that others can pick it up easily. Kind of like taking a soccer ball to the face at recess. Taking one for the team. It's not pleasant, but the rest of us are so grateful. Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. So I always yeah. got soccer balls to the face at recess. I never did because I never played at recess. Uh, me neither. <laughs> me neither. I was always on the sidelines or hanging out by the slide and still... These balls would be hitting me in the face. So sad. It was not pleasant. (laughs) I had my fair share of taking one for the team. And now we can watch other people take one for the team with their budgets. And then we can just learn from them. Beautiful. (laughs) Isn't that nice? Beautiful. That's the nice thing about having a podcast and hearing other people's stories. Yes. I don't don't feel so alone when I get hit in the face. (laughs) Yes. Well, enough about that. That. Yes. Let's get to Rachel. Yes. So best-selling author Rachel Cruz from Ramsey Solutions is here with us. So let's get into that interview. Hey, Rachel, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for having me. We're glad to have you on. Even in this quarantine life, we actually scheduled this before quarantine was a thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, So now we're in a different world. (laughs) We are. We are. So we're super glad that, yeah, that you could still make it and be with us today. Yes, absolutely. So we wanted to just pick your brain about how people could budget better, you know, because everyone is so different. And so I feel like even though we use this word budget as a blanket term, I feel like we can still there's still tips to budget better for your individual lifestyle. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. So how can somebody, we'll just kick it off, somebody that like busts their budget every month, how can someone like that safeguard themselves to stop spending out of control? Yeah, absolutely. Well, budget really is, it's your it's your, your guardrail, if you will. And so what you're going to have to do is make your budget realistic. So if you really are busting it every single month, you either have two problems. One, you just don't have the self-discipline to say no to yourself. So we can talk about that. Or number two, your budget's not realistic. And when it's not realistic and you think, okay, I'm going to just spend $200 of, you know, on food at the grocery store every month. Well, that's probably realistic if you're a family of five or a family of two. I mean, like, right, food's expensive. And so you just need to know, okay, if you just 
set this expectation that that's what you're going to spend, but you know you're going to bust it every month, you have to change the numbers. And you have to say, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm going to up that category and I'm going to lower some others because you do have to have it balanced out. You want it to equal zero where every dollar coming in is assigned to a category. And so... We're again making your budget realistic. But if it's just you just wanting stuff and saying, Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go into Target and I don't care what I spend. I just want to because I deserve it and I like spending money and that's it. Well, that's when you get into a heart issue, a little bit of a discontentment <laughs> issue, a little bit of a maturity issue. I mean, because there's a point that we all have to put our big girl pants on is what I like to say. And we have to realize, okay, in order to win with money, you have to be in control, which means part of that is saying no to yourself. And so start small if you're not used to it and grow that habit because that's going to put self-discipline in place. Because if you let your money control you for your entire life, uh, you're going to wake up probably broke one day. Mm. I love how you describe this as a guardrail. And if, with the, going along with that illustration, guardrails aren't right up on the edge of the road. They do have a little bit of room to them. And I think that's part of it is being able to anticipate what other things might be coming into play each month and don't have it so tight or stringent or, or no wiggle room in it. Yes. That's why I always recommend having a miscellaneous category in your budget. So when those things do come up, because they will, right? I mean, life is going Mm -hmm. to happen. Things are going to come up. So when they do and you have it plans for them, either throw it there in the miscellaneous category, or maybe you adjust your budget throughout the month and you say, okay, well, we're, you know, we're spending less on restaurants right now. So we're going to lower that to up something else because we know we're going to spend money in this other category. But it is fluid and it does need to go with your life. And that's the key. But people that are getting out of debt or they're building up an emergency fund, there will be more of a sacrificial budget, if you will. You will be cutting your lifestyle in mm-hmm. order to make that traction, to get those gains in your life where once you're past that, you can be a little bit more flexible with your budget. But again, it needs to reflect reality because you'll be really, really discouraged if you keep busting it every single month because the numbers aren't realistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the idea of doing the like budgeting more frequently. So doing like either per paycheck or every other week, stuff like that. Because I feel like you, you need a lot of practice with a budget to like get get traction with it. And so if you just do it more often, you can get that more practice in less time. Yeah. And I recommend I recommend doing doing it before the month begins. So doing a month long budget, but then checking in on it. So you need to be looking at it almost daily to say, okay, here's my transactions, here we're at, and keep a pulse on it. You can't just do it and walk away for 30 days because that's, you know, that's going to really mess you up and you're going to have no clue where you are. So part of it is it being, uh, that's why I even love budgeting apps on your phone that it's just with you all the time and you can adjust as you go. And I think that that's really the the key to it is to know that this is a this is for your life. And so you get to create it. No one's having to tell you what numbers or what dollar amounts need to be in each category. It's up to you. Like You get to make that decision because it's about what you value and what you want to spend your money on. I like what you're describing about self-discipline because I think that that is what it comes down to for a lot of us and the way that this does intersect with our whole person. Budgeting isn't just about finances. It's mental, emotional, relational, all of these pieces, and that sometimes it causes us to look at that part of ourselves and how content are we? And are we doing this to kind of fill a different kind of void that requires another kind of solution to it? Yes, that's mm-hmm. something that I feel like for sure a lot of people can fall into, especially when it comes, you know, Americans specifically. I feel like we are so heightened to believe, okay, well, this thing is going to make me happy. And so if that's your motivation of why you're spending money is because you think it's going to fulfill you, like you're saying, man, you're going to be a rat in a wheel for the rest of your life because stuff, well, I think it's great and I think it's fun. I want you to have some great stuff. I just don't want your nice stuff to have you. And it has you and your contentment, your identity who you are, your happiness is all dictated by the stuff that you own because that stuff, it will never, it will never fulfill you. And I think Mm -hmm. that's a really important point just to know what's your motivation. Ask yourself why. I even Mm -hmm. ask myself if I'm buying something, okay, if no one else saw it, would I still want it? Like if no one saw these pairs of shoes, if no one saw me drive this car, like 
whatever it is, whatever we purchase, you know, making sure that it really is for me or for my family. And that's it. Because when you start with the motivation of other people as well, that can get you in a spending, going down a spending Mm -hmm. black hole. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we can rationalize that, oh, no one's going to see this instant pot, but like social media, you know, you're going to throw it in the background with some like (laughs) meal prep to brag about how like good you're doing on your diet. But like, just to try and take social media out of the equation, like, yeah, would you have this if you weren't able to post it on social? Mm. Yes, exactly right. (laughs) Good word. Rachel, we've got other listeners, I'm sure, who are on the opposite end of the spectrum, and we'd love to pick your brain. What about for the person who is hoarding their money, and that might be keeping them from reaching financial goals? What kind of budgeting tips would you give to them? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that there's there's an element that we you have to spend money, right? There there is an element that you you have to spend it in order to survive in today's economy, and so you're going to be forced to spend it to spend it, and so you have to be able to say, okay, here's where it's going, and still be being diligent. But the three basic things you can do with money is give it, save it, and spend it, and you want to do all three. You kind of want to build all three money muscles, if you will, because if you just give everything away. That sounds noble, but that's really irresponsible. If you have a family to feed, you know, bills to pay, unless obviously something, you know, God calls you to do something extreme. I'm not saying I'm not putting him in a box by any means, but you know, that that's one thing you have to realize. Okay. Yeah. You do have to take care of your household. If you save everything, you hoard everything, you're probably not a natural giver. Then that means you probably really do kind of see money more in a closed fist mentality. And you're not having any fun. You're not enjoying the fruits of your labor. You are, you're hoarding it probably for a you know, for a sense of security and where some of that is very responsible, getting that emergency fund, saving for the future, when you're just hoarding it over and over and over and you have money in the bank to spend and you're just refusing to because out of probably a lot of fear of thinking, well, I don't want to go back maybe to a place that you were. Maybe you hit a really hard time financially and you just think, man, I just want to have all this money. And again, having an emergency fund, very wise. That's what we teach. But that money is not going to solve that internal fear. Eventually, that still will be there. And so you kind of have to dig deeper into that. And then again, on the say, on the spending se- spectrum, yeah, you can't spend everything you make or you're going to be broke. Like You're not going to mm-hmm. have any money. And so mm-hmm. there really is this balance. You have to learn to do all three. And we naturally kind of weigh either towards a natural spender or a natural saver. And I'm more of a natural spender. I can spend it. I enjoy it. Even my husband, we're making a big purchase we've saved up for. And he like, we got the total just two days ago. And he was like, oh, he was like, man, are you sure? You think this is good? Mm-hmm. I'm like, Yes. I was like, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just do it. Like I could do it so much easier or it's mm-hmm. much more of the, of the saver. Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit of that hoarding mentality, but they're doing it out of a safety mm-hmm. mechanism that's in them. And so you kind of just, ha- you really have to find the balance of, of all three things, giving, yeah. saving and spending. I love the simplicity of it. And I think you're, you're dead on in saying that we've got to find the balance with it. I mean, there's a, there's a way that can seem good. It can sound so noble, as you say, to be saving or to be giving, but without the other two, it, it falls flat. It doesn't actually get you to your financial goals. Yeah, I totally relate to that because that was kind of my issue. And something I still, to this day, struggle with is that scarcity mentality. I'm afraid that the money I have won't always be there. So I'm afraid to spend it on things, even if I need it. And it kept me for a while from paying off my debt. Like I would save the little bit of money I did have and not pay off my debt because I wanted to like have that money like just in case, but totally not understanding all of the interests my student loans were building up. So it was this like mindset that I have and I still work on getting over to this day. Yeah, it, it is. And again, I think knowing your natural tendencies is is really good. But I think anything on the extreme side, on again, either side of the spectrum, mm-hmm. can start to be unhealthy. And so I'm not saying, yeah, for the listener to change who you are, because you being a natural saver is a good thing. Like that, there is strength in that. And so, you know, knowing kind of that balance, kind of going, you know, more to that, to that middle ground is really, really healthy. But we all will have our natural bents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when somebody is, budgeting and getting started maybe with the cash envelope system or or the clip system how can that make cuz i know that's a, a really good way to like start to get into your budget is to just you know carry cash and then once you spend it it's gone and you can't bust your budget that way but like what if somebody 
isn't comfortable carrying cash all the time. Yeah. I mean, I think you can, you know, either leave some envelopes at home. And if you're running to the grocery store, you just grab that one. I think you can kind of finagle it. And really, this is for people really, I think when you're starting budgeting, it's just a great tactic. I think it's a good principle when you physically have cash in your hand and you have to let go of it in order to gain something else. Something happens in your mind. I mean, your your entire purchase looks different versus just swiping a card, even a debit card and taking that with you and taking home what you just bought. There is something there that that changes, that shifts. And so in order to give up something, I think it's a good mental process to go through. And and, and so, yeah, I think if you're uncomfortable carrying a, a, a lot of cash, maybe you just carry a little bit at a time, knowing that, okay, this will cover this purchase and I'm going to go out and make. And then just planning a little bit more ahead. But studies have shown when you spend with cash, you do spend less. And you it's mm-hmm. kind of your accountability partner right there. And you're like, oh, wow, this is keeping me accountable that mm-hmm. I cannot overspend. And when it's gone, it's gone. And all those visual extremes, because we're such in a digital world now, is really good to go to, at least when you first start budgeting, to really adopt that for a few months and, and see how that works for you. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So, buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So, how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic, oracle.com slash strategic. We know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, this means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Which helps to also build intentionality into how you spend. That, yeah, you will have to have some forethought in carrying cash and where you're going to go and leaving certain envelopes at home, but it does cause you to be more in in tune with your spending habits, with where you're going to be going, with what you're going to be spending. So all around, I think it's a good exercise to do. Yeah, it helps definitely the spontaneous purchases probably go down for sure. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Rachel, what about for someone, what suggestions do you have for someone after they break their budget, right? We don't always do this perfectly. And sometimes it doesn't line up the way that we think, either by getting an unexpected bill or we've made a mistake when we went into Target and came out with 12 things instead of the one thing that we went into. What do we do after that? How do we pick ourselves back up? Yeah, I think you you have to give yourself grace and know life is going to happen. It's not when it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Things are going to come up that you totally forgot about or just spontaneous things. Like we were just invited. I don't know if I should say this over quarantine, but it's true. Uh, to a friend's house because their little daughter is, is turning four and she invited two families over. We were like, sure, we'll come. And it's a birthday. And I kind of, you know, we want to get her a little gift. Well, we didn't budget for birthdays this month because we just figured that's not happening. So yeah, so figuring out, okay, so where do I, where do we put that purchase? Even down to those, those small purchases, things are going to happen. They're going to come up. And so I think the big key here is to realize 
it still has to equal zero. Everything has to balance out because I will never encourage you to spend more than what you make or than what you have. Mm-hmm. So if you did go to Target and buy 12 things and you really don't have the money and you went to debt for it, I'd probably tell you, you need to go right back in that store and return it. Yes. <laughs> Even if five minutes later. It's a real uh-huh. focus yeah. and say, this is what I'm <laughs> Returning's uh-huh. an option. Yes, exactly, exactly. And so, so yeah, I'd say that. But on the tactical level, again, if one you know bill came up, they're like, oh, wow, you're going to have to lower other categories. Or if it's an unexpected bill that you have to pay and you have that $1,000 emergency fund or an emergency fund in place, dip into that if you have to. If it's a large bill that you have to go and pay, you can dip into your emergency fund for that and then refund that, obviously, and get it back up. Mm-hmm. But again, I think working within that monthly budget is really key of just balancing it and knowing things are going to happen. So maybe you have to lower the clothing envelope or the clothing category category because something else came up and that's what it is. And there's a level of sacrifice, but, but I promise like it it sounds so like strict, but it really does give you this freedom of control. Like, I mean, you could go through your whole life just spending, spending and having no clue where your money's going. And that's ultimately not going to let you win in the long term. And so what you're doing is you're kind of going through the growing pains of learning it. Because once you start budgeting, once you get out of debt, once you get that emergency fund in place, you start to have more wiggle room. You actually do start to have margin to say, okay, you know, we can add a little bit here and there and it doesn't completely bust it. But especially those that are are sacrificing to get out of debt, it is a tough time to really, really be strict and buckle down. But it's for a short period of time. You know, you're not going to live like that forever. Eventually you get to live like no one else uh, and give like no one else is our hope. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great example of putting your big girl pants on again of there's <laughs> not permission to say, ooh, Oops, I spent too much. I guess I just went over this month. No, oops, you spent too much. Now, how are you going to fix it? And now you maybe can't go out to dinner this week or we can't do the entertainment we thought we were going to do or whatever the case is. It's it's not as if I get to go over and and now I have permission for that. That's this is part of maturing. Yeah. And I love how you refer to it as control Mm -hmm. because really it does seem restrictive, but you are in control of the restriction. And studies have shown that people who have a strong locus of control have can weather storms easier. They can bounce back from failures easier. Over the trajectory of their life, they will make more and be more financially secure. And so even though this restriction is feels really bad in the moment, you are strengthening your internal locus of control so that you can succeed more in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the budget and saying no to yourself and like, you know, change, returning your, you know, 11 items to target is like Mm -hmm. really doing. It's putting you in control. Mm -hmm. Yes. And on the flip side, it makes spending money enjoyable. So you do have, you know, a clothing budget or you do have a budget to go to target, then you get to spend freely. You don't get to say, okay, all bets are off. I can spend whatever I want. But that money you do have to spend, you spend it without guilt, without shame, without questioning. It's already plans for us. You can actually enjoy it. Enjoy those purchases so much more knowing that you've planned for them. And man, that that's the satisfaction. As the spender, that's what I love about yeah. it. <laughs> I can, you know, all these sales that are going on in every store that I love, I'm getting emails constantly. And I'm like, okay, I say no to 9 out of 10, but maybe I do want a cute new shirt from J. Crew or whatever. Well, I have money in my clothing budget. If the sale is good, if I have the money for it, sure, I'll order it. That's great. And I can do it and enjoy it. And it's fine. It doesn't completely take me out. And so that's that's the good part of it is that you can spend without stress and without questioning. Mm. Speaking of fun, freedom, satisfaction, and stress-free mm. things, yes. I think it's time for the, the Bill, Bill of the Week. The It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. All right, Rachel. Every week we invite our listeners and guests to share with us their favorite bill. And so we asked you ahead of time if you had one for us, and you do. Would you share it with us? 
yes, we were actually just talking about this place, but <laughs> are all of our favorites Target? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I went in. I had to get some baby stuff. I had to pick up a couple of groceries that I needed. I didn't want to go to the grocery store. I had a couple of things. And in my head, I was like, okay. I kind of tally up things in my head when I'm doing this. And I'm like, okay, that's probably going to cost us. And I went and somehow I just did the math wrong. And it was so much lower than I was expecting. And I was like, this is the best Target experience of my life. So uh, that was, it, it was a highlight for sure. I love it. <laughs> the, the one time in your life where you go into Target and you're like surprised by how low the bill is. Right That's now. legit. It doesn't happen. doesn't happen very often. <laughs> that speaks to a lifetime of building contentment and <laughs> sticking to a budget that you get to spend less than you thought you would at Target. That's amazing. <laughs> math and not doing math right in my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or not conquering second grade mathematics. Either way. <laughs> Thank you, math. <laughs> oh, thanks so much, Rachel, for sharing that bill. If you all listening want to submit your bill of the week, whether it's a lower bill from Target than you anticipated or a bill that you paid off or your friend named bill, please submit it to us at frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill. We'll listen to it. Mm-hmm. And we'll we'll laugh with you. Hi, I'm Martine Hackett, and I'm hosting the second season of Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition, a production from Ruby Studio in partnership with Argenix, sharing real stories of MG, CIDP, and other autoimmune conditions. We hope to share inspiration and educate the larger community about these severe and often overlooked conditions. I can't fix this. I can't cure this. And, you know, I'll take my treatment day by day, but I want to try to be engaged, be involved, or be as helpful as I feel I can with the limitations I have of working full time to children. So I participate in like market research to provide information to hopefully benefit others because it's a small margin of people that have the mycenae, but then to get pregnant, it's an even more narrow margin. And you can't ever have too much information as an epidemiologist. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> Listen to Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Shopping for humans is hard. Shopping for your dog is easy, thanks to Bark. Every month, we deliver toys and treats just for your dog. They deserve to be spoiled anyway. At Bark, we send your dog a whole new collection of toys and treats made just for them every single month. Whether it's our fun plush toys from BarkBox or our ultra-tough toys from Super Chewer. We give your dog exactly what they want. For a limited time, we'll double your first box for free. To get your free upgrade, go to BarkBox.com slash iHeart. And now it's right. time for the lightning round. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> that was Rachel. You're you're getting real <laughs> acquainted with the podcast right now. I love it. I love you it. didn't know how turn, many sound effects there were. Turn down the volume as we make our yeah. noises. <laughs> so for today's lightning round, we are going to all share our most recent budgeting flop and how we recovered from it. So these aren't like old time, like happened a few years ago. Like mm -hmm. these are recent. Mm -hmm. So we're not perfect. Rachel? Surprise, surprise. Yes. Surprise. Yes. We will we will let you start. Okay. Mine was 100 percent food. Went way over the grocery budget in April. Thank you, quarantine. Because I was like, I'm gonna cook at home more and I'm gonna <laughs> save so much money by cooking at home. Well, some of the recipes I decided to make called for the randomest, random little things, but yet, you know, it just added up added up instead of just my staples that I go to that I kind of know what's going to be happening. Yeah, I went off I went off the rails and <laughs> by the time the April <laughs> happened, I realized I had a whole other grocery shopping week to come and I had already gone over and I thought, wow, that is that is something quarantine. You just ate my entire food budget so fast. <laughs> um, so yeah, we we cut out. Honestly, we still had had a a babysitting line item in our budget, but we haven't been going anywhere. So mm. we took the kids' babysitting money that usually we pay a babysitter and, <laughs> ate, and put it in our food category. <laughs> kids, <laughs> Christy's not coming over this ate. week. <laughs> we got herbs, though. Mama's got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> we got smoked sea salt. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, Six dollars for some random little container. I thought, why did I do this? Why did I do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to have some enjoyment in quarantine, and usually that's food. 
Kids. I know. S- snack, snack, snack. Kids, man. They just eat everything all the mm-hmm. time. And I'm like, wow. Ooh. So that's it for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I have a one-year-old. He just turned one. And like, he's starting to eat regular food. And well, he does. That's all he eats now. And it's like, man, I thought I had enough dinner for me, but now I have to share it with you. Like <laughs> it's thrown off my food budget. <laughs> All right. So mine, I'm going to get real raw here. So in April, I was Fifty Shades of Anxious. All of the social media and the news was just making me anxious. So like, and that's not normally me. So like for our people that deal with that all the time, like I really am feeling for you. But I was reading about layoffs in all of these industries and uh, came across like our local newspaper and how they had to lay off more people. And all of my friends at my former job were all journalists. And so I just like felt really intensely for them. And so I was like, oh my gosh, like I need to, I need to support local journalism. I need to buy a, I need to buy a subscription to the newspaper. And like, I don't read the newspaper. (laughs) And so without even like thinking or looking at the budget or anything, I just like dropped $77 on on a newspaper subscription. And I told Travis and he was like, you don't read the newspaper. But I was just, (laughs) I was crying and I was like so sad about layoffs. And so, (laughs) so what we did is I got the refund and we are giving that, we've already started to give that money and more to actual people instead of just one company, but like people who are affected by layoffs, like across different businesses. So I'm not wasting my money on something I'll never use, but it's still going to support the reason that initially I had spent it. So, and it's doing it a better job of it. I was with you when that happened. That was a fun opportunity to see how you and Travis navigated that together. (laughs) Oh my gosh, you were. He was not thrilled, but you guys (laughs) got through it. Yeah, no, he was right. Rightfully so. Not thrilled. Uh, So for me, similar to you, Rachel, it's food. It's always, always, always food. Uh, I am a bit food motivated, but yet simultaneously, it's so overwhelming for me to have to think about food all the time. And I realize, especially right now with what's going on with COVID and quarantine, that the pendulum swings for me, that sometimes I do fantastic and we don't spend a dime eating out. And I'm really good about meal planning and prepping and all of that. And then I'll get to the next pay period and I'll be like, all right, I did so well. I'm so done with cooking. And now all we're doing is ordering out. And that happened. The pendulum swung. And I thought that I could reward myself with just going out all the time. And that blew our food budget. Thankfully, we're not going or doing anything else. So we could borrow from our gas budget what we have for gas (laughs) because that has cost us a total of $30 each month. So that's great. And I'm aiming at the radical middle at this point, realizing that I need both. So not swinging so far to the right or to the left, but doing some meals at home, some takeout. But what I also realize is helpful for me is to do a combination. So for instance, I might pick up a couple of chicken tenders from Chick-fil-A and add it to my own salad. So I feel like I've gotten out because that's part of it for me is feeling like a bit of a reward and something that I didn't have to make myself. But yet that only cost me like $5 and I can add it to my own salad salads or sandwiches. And that feels easier to me. So that's my radical middle with food budget. I love that. I know I did the same when we cooked all of April. Beginning of May, I was like, we're going out every night. (laughs) We're heading for you. Chick-fil-A, we're heading for you. So get ready. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, the lines are so, so long at Chick-fil-A these days. (laughs) But they go through them like so fast. (laughs) It's insane. Science. They got it. They got it. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, Rachel, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. It's been super cool. We didn't get to meet you when we were in Nashville and back in October, you know, because you were like having a baby or something. (laughs) (laughs) But super glad to hang out with you now. What do you have going on? Where can 
people find you and well, they know where they can find you, but like, what do you have going on for people? Yeah. Well, we always have the Rachel Cruz show going with podcasts and the video version. So you can check that out on YouTube and Facebook and wherever you listen to podcasts. Yeah. We're kind of just doing uh, lots of content around this COVID stuff. So if you need help, you can do that. We're giving away actually a 14 day free trial of Financial Peace University, which is our uh, nine lesson course. So you can go to dayramsey.com slash hope and sign up for there and just binge watch some videos if you need help and guidance on what to do with your money, how to get out of debt, how to budget like we've been talking about. And then everything from, gosh, insurance to real estate. I mean, anything you need to know when it comes to personal finance, we have it for you. So make sure to check that out as well. Yeah, I checked it out recently. And yeah, you can get a lot in just 14 days. So Mm -hmm. definitely uh, highly recommend Mm -hmm. that daveramsey.com slash hope. So cool. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me on. I so appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. All right. End recording. Well, I'm not going to end the recording, but awesome. Perfect. We'll chop it here. (laughs) Thank you guys so so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Of course. We appreciate you taking the time and and hopefully at least I will get to see you maybe in Orlando in August. Oh, good. Yes. So yeah. Yes, I know. Yeah. If it all continues on, hopefully hopefully it's still on. Hopefully. (laughs) Yeah. It is. Awesome. 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 Well, thanks. Let us know if there's anything on our end that we can help you guys with. Perfect. For sure. Thanks so much. Stay safe. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye. That was awesome. I'm so glad that we could get Rachel on the show and uh, have a really good conversation with her. Such a treat and an honor. So we are very glad and pleased to share this with you all and excited to hear your feedback and what your takeaways were from this interview. Yeah. And whatever side of the pendulum you swing on with personal finance, like all of Rachel's tips were super factual Mm -hmm. and can help anybody with their budget. Mm -hmm. So don't assume budgets are not for you, but a plan is so essential for meeting any goal or even realizing goals that you may not have known you had. But as you start to plan and budget more, your mind starts to open up to the possibilities in your finances and it can create goals for you. Mm -hmm. So we really hope that you will take these tips to heart and make budgets that work for you and that are sustainable for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love the simplicity. I think it's always a good reminder of, okay, if I feel like I'm stuck in the weeds or the woods somewhere, I can come back to the basics of give, save, spend, look at this like a guardrail, be realistic plan ahead. Like it's, it's so helpful to kind of realign back to the middle, back to these foundational pieces and then go from there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So thanks for listening. And uh, we want to thank you for also sharing the podcast, for reviewing it like this awesome review. It's from Fancy Kerrigan, which I, as a former figure skater, kind of especially uh, appreciate that name. And she says, financial literacy made easy. It happens to be five stars. She says, I've been looking for resources to become more financially literate as a woman in my late 20s and have found this is a fantastic resource for getting started and feeling empowered. They tackle a lot of different topics and everything feels especially relevant and important in the era of COVID. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, that's helpful. I think that we've been hoping that that's the case. I mean, first of all, putting out some relevant content right now as we all are walking through this, but I think frugality in general is just a needed topic right now for all of us. Mm -hmm. Because even if we are able to hold down jobs right now, it highlights the fact that, whoa, anything could happen. And I need to get Mm -hmm. serious about my budget and my spending and my savings and my debt payoff and my financial goals. So really pleased to be offering relevant content. Yeah, definitely. With some fun. We are friends and there will be fun and banter sprinkled in. 
frugal, fun, fantastic, fabulous friends. <laughs> and alliteration. And definitely that. We also want to thank all of you, our friends who are sharing these episodes. So whether you're tagging us on uh, Facebook or Instagram, when you share the latest episode, we are going to thank you by entering you into our drawing for every five tags and reviews. So this is going into the review pot too. We get each month, we're going to be giving away $10 Amazon gift cards. So it's one for every five. So your odds are pretty good. Mm -hmm. And we do give these out. Yeah, we do. We literally do. People have gotten <laughs> Amazon gift cards in their inbox from us. Yeah, we just do them like way after we record. So like it's hard to talk about them in every show. So keep leaving us those reviews on iTunes or Stitcher and sending them, sending a screenshot to frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to tag us at frugalfriendspodcast on social. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Bow, bow, do. <laughs> Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriani. Um, how's your dinosaur? So good. If you're on the YouTube, you'll be able to see my dinosaur. If we share well, video, I think we might just do voices. But there is okay. a dinosaur that Jen wanted to share with everybody. If you're in a Frugal Friends Facebook community group, we can set, show a picture of you and your dinosaur, which is actually Kai's first birthday gift. Yeah, it's not my dinosaur, which I guess makes it a little better. But um, Kai's, he's tapping the mic. Um, <laughs> got a, He got a dinosaur for his first birthday from his godmother. and mm. And it's still in my office. As are all of his gifts. Because that's the for. frugal thing to do is give him a gift at a time in a right. way that a one-year-old can enjoy gifts. Exactly. And it's not just because I'm too lazy to put them away or anything. Um, <laughs> I'm doing it intentionally where I'm yes. giving it, you know, one at a time. It's a parenting technique. It has nothing yeah. to do with organization. Nope. Um, so just me and Dino over here sitting with our floor full of gifts. Looking cute. Feeling cute. <laughs> feeling cute. Might delete later. No, we won't delete this. I promise. <laughs> Bye. Bye. With the best all-inclusive vacation deals to Mexico and the Caribbean, booking your getaway with cheap Caribbean vacations means you have more freedom to do your deal. Whether you want to enjoy snorkeling, endless margaritas and more, or simply soak up the sun and sand in a tropical paradise, cheap Caribbean vacations has your deal for that. Plan and book the exact getaway you want at exactly the right price for you by using our exclusive budget beach finder. Or find a featured all-inclusive package to Ibera Star Hotels and Resorts and do your deal at CheapCaribbean.com. Bring home Napoleon. Destiny has brought me here. The action epic from acclaimed director Ridley Scott. What is your name? Napoleon. You are the greatest leader in the history of the world. Witness the rise. You are nothing without me. Of the legend. Starring Academy Award winner Joaquin Phoenix and Vanessa Kirby. I'm the first to admit when I make a mistake. I simply never do. Napoleon. Buy or rent on digital now. Rated R.